Isn't it always confusing how the guys you never want are crazy obsessed with you, but the guys you would literally die for don't even notice your existence? It's actually not a coincidence. It's a very strange law about how men think, which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing why men fall in love when you do nothing. That way you can finally make sense of why the men you actually want don't seem to ever want you. So number one, the concept of the hunter's mentality. Part of the reason why the gaming industry is so successful is because they've been able to capitalize on the understanding of how men think and the hunter's mentality. Okay. And you can do the same thing if you actually understand the hunter's mentality and how it gets triggered in men going out starting from nothing you gotta build it up you gotta work for your rewards work for your respect as you earn respect you earn money you earn resources you earn tools you get better you're better at the game you're more capable than, than other people right and all of those things that you have to do in a video game that are necessary to success in the video game literally literally one-to-one -one, represent what he would be doing back in the day as a hunter. Okay. So we don't have hunter cavemans anymore. We have pro video game players. Okay, I know that sounds really sad. Psychology of it is the same thing. If you don't understand how to allow the men that approach you, approach you, approach you, not you approaching them to start from zero and work their way up, you're never going to have the type of man who has a hunter's mentality when it comes to you and his relationship with you. Instead, his mentality is going to be, let me sit back, relax, and receive as much as I possibly can. In reality, doing nothing is a lot more complex because there's so many things you have to avoid doing, and there's so many things you have to anticipate in order to do nothing strategically. So we're going to discuss those things today as well in the process of that. See, when you're doing nothing, meaning not going out and going out of your way to text him and reach out to him, he he said he's going to call you cool he said he's going to call you if he doesn't call you you don't call him because he said he was going to call you he said he was going to ask you out on another date next week cool then when he's ready to ask you out on another date next week he will ask you out on another date next week you're not going to sit around waiting for him to ask you out on a, a date next week and you're damn sure not going to message him to remind him that he said he was going to take you out on a date next week see when you're strategic about understanding i just need to continue doing nothing because it will allow him the space to be a hunter. You will always be in a position of winning for two reasons. One, you'll only end up attracting a very specific type of man that is looking for a very specific type of thing from you. And also, you'll always end up putting yourself in a position where when he does finally come to you, it's because you've given him the space to be a hunter. Now, number two, picking out the weeds. Thomason, you don't get it. You're not, you're like an AI. You're not like a real human being, man. You just don't get the type of guys that I deal with. If I do nothing, Thomason, he's literally going to forget my existence. If I do nothing, Thomason, he's literally never going to text me. If I do nothing, he's not going to call me. And he damn sure won't ask me out on any dates, Thomason. I like your advice, but you don't know how real guys actually operate in today's age in 2024. You're not, you're an AI. I'm here to let you know that the anxiety you feel that doing nothing is only going to lead to you being in a relationship with a guy who's uninterested in you or a guy who doesn't message you or take you out on dates is actually a good thing because you get the opportunity to pick out the weeds. Here is one of your major issues. The guys you don't like and you don't care about, you ignore them, you don't speak to them, you don't bother spending any of your time and energy on them. So they're basically un they don't exist to you. Now, the guys that you actually like, you're anxious with, you text all the time, you reach out to them 24-7, you try to ask them out on dates, you try to remind them of your existence, you're doing the absolute most, right? What ends up happening because you adopt that mindset is all the men that are in your life are men that you chase. So the only men you feel you can even build a relationship with are men that you chase. But the thing about it is when you begin doing nothing, you only end up attracting men into your life that are willing to pursue you and chase after you. Because when you do nothing all the time, not just doing nothing when you don't like the guy, also doing nothing when you do like the guy, the only type of men that ever end up getting access to you or being in your life are men that are willing to pursue you. Number three, it's gonna sound funny. It's called, please come to my concert syndrome. Uh, I'm gonna describe to you a scenario 
and I'm going to connect it to everything that we're talking about here today. There's two types of concerts. So the first concert is a local concert held by, you know, a guy that went to your high school and he's messaging you, DMing you on Instagram. He's saying, yo, my concert happening July 25th. Can you please attend that? I want you to come to my, please, can you come to my concert? And he's spamming you with messages every single day for a month. Please come to my concert. Can someone come to my concert? We got, we still got a whole bunch of seats. There's only been 10 seats filled. Please, anyone come to the concert. It's free. There's no entry. And you're like, ew, this is so gross. I'm probably going to avoid opening this message so I don't get secondhand embarrassment. Now, I also want you to imagine scenario number two in which there is also a concert by the same genre of music. Let's just say it's hip hop, but this time it's a Drake concert. Drake doesn't message you personally to ask you to come to his concert. Drake posts on his story or on his page, I'm having a concert July 25th. Done. He doesn't even ask you to come. And you're scrambling and you're like, oh my God, it's Drake, Drake's coach. Oh my God, where's the link? Where's the link? Stacy, say, where's the link to the concert? But Drake didn't invite you personally to his concert. Drake didn't have to ask you to come to his concert. In fact, Drake doesn't even know who you are. But you really want to go to his concert. <laughs> In a very weird way, people can take up emotional space. It kind of forces you to back off of that emotion. So what I mean by that is... If Drake were begging you to go to his concert, he takes up the emotional space where you really want to go to this concert because it stops being about you really desperately wanting to go to Drake's concert. And it starts being more about Drake begging you to go to his concert. So now you're deciding, do you want to go to this concert or not? But you see, when Drake just posts this concert and he doesn't care about whether you come or not. You now have space emotionally to say, I really desperately want to go to this concert. Do you kind of see how that works? And so what I mean by concert, right, in the analogy, I'm referring to taking you out on dates and wanting to spend more time with you. See, the more you're like, please spend more time with me, you take up that emotional space where he can't say, I want to spend more time with you. So the art of doing nothing is so amazing because when you give guys that space to just chill out, and realize within themselves that they want to spend more time with you, they're actually able to say, I want to spend more time with you. And number four, I want us to discuss love poet syndrome. I want you to imagine when we still rode horses to deliver messages, like in medieval times, a scenario in which you're like a damsel in some kingdom. And this knight in shining armor is coming to deliver a message to the king of your kingdom. And while he's passing around on his horse, you know, his white horse is going and his metals all clanking, right? And you're wearing a nice, beautiful dress and you're just fetching water for your family or something like that. I don't know, whatever they do in medieval times. And he sees you and he's like, you are, they always have a British accent. I must say, you are the most gorgeous women I've ever met in my life. Could you consider me a man to have your hand. And you're like, oh, geez, I'm just a woman. I'm just a damsel. And he's like, don't worry. I shall take care of you. I shall love you like no other man has ever loved you. I must go back, back to my kingdom. But rest assured, I will write you every day until my last dying breath. I love you. When he, as soon as he gets back to his kingdom, he's writing you a long love poem of how you're the most amazing woman he's ever met. And how when he finally saw that twinkle in your eye from the corner of his eye, he knew that this was the moment meant for both of you. And he knows that just in a couple months after he goes off to war at his kingdom, he will come back and he will take your hand in marriage and he will whisk you off to his kingdom. And you guys will have so many babies and have so make so much love. And he's like writing this whole amazing long uh, poem for you. And the reason I'm trying to help connect this to you in how powerful it is to do nothing is because men still have that within them. Literally, when you begin to do nothing, I, I know this is going to sound horrible. People begin to build this idea of you in their mind. The pursuit of you becomes so enchanting. And the fact that you just do nothing and continue to allow them pursuing you just creates this obsessive mind state where they can't think about anything else but getting more access to you. Because men are always going to appreciate your absence. Not because they don't like you, but because in your absence, they're actually capable of appreciating you. Even if in your absence, you're not doing anything. 
That's the most powerful part about doing nothing is that the absence creates this fondness within them that they just build you up and build you up and build you up in their mind that all they can do is anticipating being with you, anticipating spending time with you, anticipating being around you, taking you out on a date because you're like this most amazing damsel that once he laid his eyes on you, his whole entire life changed. And number five, Sherlock Holmes syndrome and because you're not openly saying hey i'm doing this i'm here i'm there i'm doing this i thinking like this this is what i want this is what i feel this is what I and you're yapping and you're dumping uh, everything now he actually has to think to himself gee i do like her i do want to spend time with her how does she feel about me though what does she want from me what does she think how is she responding to me does she like us going out on dates does she like spending time with me i want to know more about her where has she been what is she up to? She doesn't text me. What is she doing when she's not texting me? Is she at work? All the questions that I just stated are probably questions you've asked in your own mind of a guy who you like that wasn't seeming to show that much interest in, interest in you. And usually the guys that you were the most obsessed with were the guys that were doing the least. And because they were doing the least, it created a Sherlock Holmes syndrome in you where you're constantly asking questions in your own mind about him. And the moment you can get a guy in a position where he's trying to figure out Scooby-Doo clues about you well by golly me you're gonna have a guy on your hands that is obsessed with you when i say mystery you're like i don't know how to be mysterious i'm not mysterious thomason i literally trauma dump thomason i literally tell people everything that's on my mind there's not a mysterious bone in my body you can simply be mysterious by doing nothing because the natural instinct when you start to do nothing and they have interest in you is for them to push forward towards you 